Hi, it's Mark Jenkins with a look at my giant modular synthesizer, and we see it first featured on The Gadget Show. I went off to meet electronic music guru Mark Jenkins. He produced the world's first album created exclusively on an iPad, and I hoped he'd be able to help me choose the right tablet for the job. I've brought along three of the big players in the tablet yeah. market here. I could even sing on it. You can sing into okay. the iPad, I'm yes. Not going yes. To. <laughs> the Garage Band app on my iPad 2 was filling me with confidence. I've got a chance. I've got a chance! This is the giant modular synthesizer system known as the Monster, and I'm just going to show you in a bit more detail all the sections. We start at the top left. This is a um, Moog Torvus 2 brain. Of course, this was designed as a, a bass synthesizer and uh, came with a, a pole and pedals, which aren't included. Uh, but it's basically a two oscillator monophonic synth with a very powerful sound. Underneath that is a Mobius sequencer by Future Retro. Uh, not many of these built. Uh, the Mobius is a step time sequencer with MIDI and CV outputs. So normally the CV outputs on that would be connected to the Moog immediately on top of it to play bass lines. Underneath that is a 48 hole patch bay and that can be used to uh, patch voltages or audio signals anywhere you want. And underneath that is a Nobel's MX42 4 channel mixer which mixes all the modules on this left hand side of the system together. Next uh, a Korg MS2000R which of course is a very powerful 4 note polyphonic MIDI synthesizer with its own uh, sequencers and arpeggiators built in. And underneath that, the uh, Revolution 309 Vrivex Klaus Schultz Limited Edition. This is the uh, 309 Revolution drum machine and sequencer with a different sound set and different patterns, and of course, this black finish to match the rest of the system. Not many of those built either. Underneath this is the uh, sound generating section of a Roland SH3A. The kept keyboard has been taken off. So that's a very powerful uh, abstract sound creator. There's uh, a couple of different types of uh, glissando and arpeggiation on it. So you can uh, set that up to uh, make sounds a little bit similar to the um, abstract noises of the EMS synthy and that's its main job in this system. Um, on this one um, some of the footages on the oscillator uh, aren't sounding but you can have 32 foot 16, 8, 4 and 2 all up together. A couple of those aren't functioning but all the others still are so uh, compared to most monophonic analog since there's uh, still a lot going on. Moving to the center section at the top, this is the uh, module section of a Sinair PS1. This is, uh, again, there's not many of these about, it's an analog drum synthesizer. Uh, originally this had a set of pads uh, underneath it, which we'll show you in a second. Um, this isn't completely functional, the power transformer has been taken out apparently in somebody's attempt to change it from US to UK voltage which is never finished um, and it appears that the knob caps are, are taken off. So that's mainly there for cosmetic purposes at the moment to finish the line of top modules um, but that should be uh, possible to make that work uh, with a bit of attention. It needs a power transformer fitted inside. And then you should have um, <coughs> very powerful and flexible uh, analog percussion sounds. More percussion sounds under that. This is the um, Altsang DS2 by a Japanese company called Pro Muser. And each of these is a two channel analog percussion synthesizer. Again these 
uh, came with pads, which we'll see in a second, but they have trigger inputs on the back, so you play them from any trigger source. So in there there's four uh, completely independent uh, analog percussion sounds. Next we come to the, the center of the system. This is a Delta Music Research Studio system. And uh, this is a highly flexible and, and compact uh, modular analog synth. Actually it looks as if it's in modules, but these modules do not come out independently. Uh, they're all together on the same faceplate. Um, the patching is by Banana Jacks and there's plenty of Banana Jacks supplied. And uh, there's a, a color coding there of black and white jacks to uh, help you do your patching. Now this system's unusual because uh, it has four oscillators, uh, fully analog of course, but they can be configured to play polyphonically. So while it's an analog modular system, it can actually be a polyphonic system because there's four oscillators, uh, four envelopes and four filters. And I'll show you in a second a couple of options for playing that. Um, just going down that in a bit more detail, um, firstly there's a double LFO, then there's three VCOs, two mixers, two filters, two VCAs, and on the bottom line another two VCAs, two envelopes, and another two envelopes, with attenuators and multiples in between them. More attenuators and multiples. And finally a uh, voltage controlled flanger which is very useful. And a uh, spring line weaver. Looking over to the right hand side we have another Moog Taurus 2 brain, again a very powerful uh, bass synthesizer, and underneath that a quasi midi polymorph. Uh, that's a polyphonic, highly programmable uh, synthesizer and step sequencer which can uh, make very complex uh, patterns and tunes by itself. And then another Korg MS2000R. Again, this has built-in uh, arpeggios and sequences, so that can play by itself, or you can link in all the uh, MIDI inputs of all these modules to the same clock and clock them all together. Finally, it's all mixed together by a Tascam MM1, which gives uh, 20 channels and four effect sends, so it'll handle all the uh, modules in this system, plus a few more of your own. It all sits on the Roland MKB300 MIDI keyboard controller, which is splittable, 76 note MIDI keyboard. And again, uh, you patch the MIDI out of that into any modules that you wish to play, or you can play the modules from another MIDI source. Finally, these are the pads which came off the Sinair. You could put those back on at any time if the um, Sinair is going to be made to work. The uh, actual pad surfaces have decayed a lot now though, so you might wish to um, uh, cover those with something else. This is the um, original keyboard which comes with the Delta Music Research System. This is a microprocessor controlled four note polyphonic keyboard. So again that will send um, four control voltages uh, to play the um, system polyphonically. But uh, that's uh, included as a spare because using the MKB300 the whole system sits on is a bit more practical at the moment. Finally, there's a couple of bits and pieces. These are the uh, 
optional wooden uh, end cheeks for the Mobia should you want to take it out and mount that back again. These are the lids for the uh, uh, ultrasound DS2s and they have built in small pads on them with the piezo pickup so if you wanted to take the uh, ultrasounds out and put these lids back on you can play them with a percussion synthesizer. One of them is complete, the other one is um, lacking the pads and one of the piezo pickups but it should be possible to build something to substitute and finally a box full of banana cords and uh, plugs for the Delta Music Research System. So that is the monster and all its spare bits and pieces. Hope you enjoyed looking at it.